careers. We try to ship for get picked up by a, a big tech company. What Mike has built and, and what this team brings is it's AAA class. And I thought, this is the model that we're going to grow Genus. I would first look to contract out to create encoding careers where you're gonna get experienced technology. into your company for long-term growth. So you're better off starting where you can groom and mentor and shape, you know, people for your organization. I've worked with coding teams for many years, and this was the first one that just picked up where we were and started continuing like they, like they built it. We're happy to have them in the building and see what they're developing. This is the second location. They started out with us in our building in Escondido. Creating coding careers has this incredible combination of subject matter expertise in the technology field and what is actually required to do the job, as well as this network of employer partners who believe in the mission on changing what technologists We are live. We're doing it again. I am so excited to have today's guest on board. I'm going to let Alex introduce her. She is a dynamic force in the ServiceNow ecosystem. And so this is a big episode. So strap in. If you've got questions, uh, comments, please drop those in the chat. We want this to be interactive. We want to answer all your questions and, uh, and really, again, give you a ton of value today. I'm Mike Roberts, and I would like to introduce my co-host, Alex Martinez. Appreciate it, Mike. Thank you. Welcome back, everybody, to Creating Coding Careers, where we train people to transition into technology. Our next guest speaker, she needs no introduction. She is none other than ServiceNow Rising Star, Callie Alexander. So I ran across Callie Alexander's uh, channel, 100 Days of ServiceNow, late last year. I know she started out by just giving us these great tips and tricks on how to use the ServiceNow platform. And then that channel evolved into something great. She really starts providing a lot of um, uh, support to the community. She brought out a lot of titans from the industry to talk about uh, how they got into the industry and pass along tips and tricks to everybody else and how they could get into the industry as well. So I'm so happy to have her. Uh, Mike, maybe you want to kick us off with a few questions for her. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, welcome, welcome, Kelly. Uh, hey, everybody. Hey, Mike. Thank I, you so much for having me. Yeah, I am just uh, thrilled to have you. And I remember the last time we saw each other in person for the first time at Knowledge, which was phenomenal, bumping into you there and seeing, you know, you had yeah, people mobbing you and, you know, asking you for autographs. And all that. So, wow. Man. <laughs> it was hard. wild. It was wild, wasn't it? It was my first yeah. one. Was it yours as well? It was. It was. And it was real fun. So being a new person in the ecosystem and being welcomed in with in that experience, you know, all the heavy hitters, heavy, heavy hitters in the room. It was exciting. So I want to ask, where, where, where are you at with the state of service now, right now? Like, I know there's a lot going on in the ecosystem. How does it feel like in the moment? You know, I haven't really taken the time to like really sit down and take a breath, but you know, and I want to answer all your questions, your questions, Alex's questions, everybody in the chat. But I first want to thank you, Mike, so much for having me on your stream. I love what you're doing with creating coding careers. It's not lost on me all the work that you're doing over there and your dynamic team. So I, it's really an honor to be here. But in terms of the state of service now, I think this is a phenomenal time to be in this ecosystem, whether you're a customer looking for a digital transformation or whether you're someone who is looking to grow a career in the tech industry. I think this is the time, like now is the time to be with ServiceNow. And I'm so grateful that I found it. Um, my mentor said to me about this time last year, actually, she said, hey, there's this thing called ServiceNow. I think knowing how your brain works, I think that this would really be your thing. 
And when I heard about the, the CSA and I heard about the vouchers they were given, I just jumped right in. You know, I jumped in head first and started scaling up as quickly as I could. And I think in terms of your question specifically, this is the time to be in this ecosystem. Right. And, and again, I think that coincides with Rise Up, right? This this new mantra that they have. Um, and um, if you would, you know, it's okay to show some flowers. Who's the mentor? Who's that person that got you into A hundred percent. Kamel Sampson Briscoe is my, is one of my mentors. She's the one that introduced me to ServiceNow. She's been on my stream. She is the plat ServiceNow platform owner at LA County Superior Court, the largest Superior Court in the country, or is it the second largest? It's, it's up there. And she manages, she's the platform owner. She manages like I think she has like under her like 25, 30 people. She's been in tech for most of her life. And yes, indeed, let's give Camille Briscoe her flowers. I'm sending you an air horn, Camille. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. I'm going to pass it over to my uh, co-host, Alex. I'm sure he's got some great, you got you, folks out there, you're going to get some great insight from Callie today. So Alex, what do you have? All yeah, right, so let's I was, go. I was perusing your LinkedIn profile, Callie, trying to learn a little bit about you. And I see that you're a yoga master. You're a real yoga guru. <laughs> and I can imagine that you developed your networking skills uh, all along while you were uh, creating your own company. I think you created your own company at one point even. And so uh, I think it was like a few weeks ago, maybe even last month, I had a, a guest speaker on. We were talking about the job search. And I think you were there. You, were, uh, you popped in. You started asking some questions. And I think one of the questions you asked was about networking. And I was like, Callie, why are you asking me about networking? You are like the networking guru. If anything, anybody asks me a question about networking, I always say, I would always say, go check out Callie Alexander. Go check out her LinkedIn profile and go check out her channel because uh, she just started last year. And from now, from then until now, she has not only become a rising star, she has been rubbing elbows with all the big uh, gurus in the industry. And she did it all, I think, through networking. So that's a topic I definitely want to invite you to talk a little bit more about. But before we get into that, I did want to ask about the yoga transition from yoga, mm -hmm. yoga to tech. If you could kind of like uh, take us back to that story, like how did that happen? Well, you know, the story happened is that, you know, I'm a mom of three children. I just graduated my youngest child from high school uh, just last month. And I dedicated my entire life to my children. And it was no easy ride. I was a single, single mom. And I worked as a yoga teacher. I first actually began working as a classroom teacher. I taught first grade, I taught fourth grade, I taught trigonometry. And at that time, earlier in my teaching career, my children my, were babies then. And I would be able to take my smallest two children to my parents' house. They would watch them during the day. And then my older child, I would take him to go to school with me. He would be in kindergarten. And so once my younger children got older, then they started going to different schools. And so it got really hectic. So I said, okay, well, I'll teach yoga because that way I can kind of organize my schedule in a way. I created a business around creating international yoga retreats and experiences. And that allowed me to be a bit more available and hands-on as a parent. I always wanted to be soccer mom, so to speak. I wanted to be the dance mom. I wanted to be Johnny on the spot if anything ever went on at my children's schools or they needed volunteers. And so as I was doing that, I always knew that once they became older, I knew that I wanted to transition into some type of career in tech, but I didn't know which way. I didn't know how to do it, didn't really know. I didn't have really any direction or guidance. But then once they started getting older, the two older ones got out of school. The younger one was still, you know, about her last couple of years. So I said, okay, I've got to find a way. And I hope this lands okay. I know that this was a really tough time for everybody, but I think the pandemic was perhaps the best thing that happened for my career transition to tech because it really forced everyone, especially forced me to sit down and really chart out a plan and not be distracted by anything else, including my job, my work as a yoga teacher and international yoga retreat leader. And so that allowed me to really chart out my path. I created a study plan for myself. I have these things in yoga. We have this thing called the ambrosia hours. And the ambrosia hours are those first couple hours right before the sun rises. So I said, okay, I'm going to take those ambrosia hours that between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m., I'm just going to study. I'm just going to study. Every morning between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m., I will wake up and I will study. 
take care of whatever the household things was, whatever work it had to do. Once the house was quiet again, then I would study again. Those first few months was really difficult because I had no idea what was going on. I would have to go over it and over it and over it again. And I was trying to basically map out how to do this on my own. There was the Next Gen program. And so I found a syllabus that the Next Gen program was following. I said, okay, well, what I can do is create my own, my own study plan and just make it as closely aligned to what the folks in Next Gen were getting. The only thing that I could not replicate was the potential of getting in front of potential employers to interview. That's what the Next Gen program folks get a chance to do. So I said, well, how do I do that? I said, oh, well, that's simple. Employers are on LinkedIn. And over the pandemic, I learned how to use a camera. I was managing a digital yoga studio. So I was comfortable being on camera. And so I said, okay, I'll just start doing live streams. I'll just start doing that. And, and that's kind of how it got started. That's sort of like the, the condensed version of what happened. I hope that answers your question. I think it did. And so can you let us in on, on how networking played a part on how you got maybe into ServiceNow and how you started growing your following in ServiceNow because you have quite a bit of a following now. Yeah, it's funny because Alex, when you when I you know pop up on your streams, you're like, yeah, Colleen, she's a networking guru. And I laugh about it. And then yeah. I even got so bold to say, yeah, I'm gonna teach y'all how to network like a boss. Well, really, I just feel like I'm just being me. <laughs> you know, I'm just talking to people. And that's one of the things that I really like to do. I enjoy talking to people. I enjoy having intimate conversations like the ones that you and I are having right now. And so I think to your question about how that yoga teacher thing kind of helps, I think teaching in general kind of helps because you have to connect with people with mm -hmm. yoga, with trigonometry, or whether you're teaching the multiplication tables, you have to have some type of connection, right? And I think that that was sort of like a transferable skill that allowed me to be able to network. And being able to network online just meant that, okay, I'm gonna have to do that in kind of this virtual, you know, dis distance setting. And, you know, it just, it happened to work for me. And yeah. So I don't know if you would consider yourself an extrovert. I would consider you an extrovert, but for some of us introverts who find it a lot harder to communicate like you do so easily uh, and put ourselves on camera and just mm -hmm. kind of put ourselves out there, what kind of tips do you have for all the introverts out there? Okay. There's this quote and I'm going to paraphrase it. And in fact, I'm on threads, you guys, if you guys are on threads, follow me. I'm on threads as Kali right now. <laughs> All right. So I actually think that I'm an amber as an as a amber, ambivert, like I'm neither an introvert or an extrovert. Right. And if anything, I, I would say like there's this quote and the quote goes something like this. We have two lives. And the first the second one begins when you realize that you only have one. And what I take that to mean is that a lot of times we waste so much time waiting for permission, waiting for the right time, waiting till I'm secure enough, waiting until I'm skilled enough, waiting until I'm bold enough. Well, if you keep waiting, you're kind of like wasting your life, right? And so I think about my ancestors who didn't have this opportunity. I think about my children who, who really want to see me model for them what it looks like to kind of like do this thing with the family and then turn around and do this really great thing in this new fantastic career. So when I think about those things, it makes me less scared, right? It makes me know that I have to do this. Like, especially during the pandemic, like it was do or die time. My, the digital yoga studio that I was managing, they were folding and I still had bills to pay. Even though my children had graduated from high school, I'm still the main caretaker. You know, I still had to provide for them. So it wasn't, I didn't even think about like, oh my God, I'm shy. Oh my God, I'm nervous. Oh, is this camera going to explode in my face? It was like, I have to do this. Just have it's, to do it. Just yeah. have to do it. So to your, to more specifically to your, your question, Alex, and let me just kind of bring this on home and land this plane, is that whether you're an introvert, if you're an introvert, I say to you, think about your larger purpose. Mm -hmm. Think about like what it is that you ultimately want to achieve. And once you do, I think it becomes less important whether or not you're, you're afraid. Can you give us some tips on how to start building your network? Um, yeah. So Mike instills in us, you know, using the LinkedIn as a tool just to do that, right? Starting to, uh, you know, make connections to people out there in the industry. Do you have a strategy 
for just kind of growing your network? And how do you maintain that network? Yeah, I, I, I have a very, I have a skeleton type of strategy. And I, this is something that I've never heard anyone say, it works for me. I rarely, rarely send, in terms of LinkedIn, I rarely send connection requests ever, right? I just don't send connection requests. So I believe that what has worked for me is, I guess in what you, in the marketing sense, is referred to as attraction marketing. So you're creating content on LinkedIn, whether it's live stream, whether it's newsletter, whether it's carousels, whether it's interesting, humorous, thoughtful posts on LinkedIn. As you create that content, that content, your audience is going to start to gather around you, right? So you don't have to like start to send the connection request. And I think even when you're looking for a job, I honestly think it's this is what worked for me. Sending those connection requests was not the move. <laughs> like they they were not the move because once someone sees the green flag, it's sort of like okay, what does this person want from me? Do they, they want me to get them a job? They want me to do them a favor? They want to hook me hook them up? They want to send me their resume? It's just not the move, and it wasn't for me. And I just said that as long as I had that green flag up, I was not going to send a connection request, and I absolutely didn't. And that, honestly, during that time, that's when I got, like, when I got a connection request from Rob Fedoric, I tell you my wig blew off. Like, I, I couldn't believe that I got a connection request from Rob Fedoric. And so when I got, it's this, and the reason why I couldn't believe that was because I would listen to CJ and the Duke podcast like 24 seven. It was part of my learning plan, right? And so I just don't believe that connection requests work in the way that we want them to work. Another thing is in terms of connection requests on LinkedIn, I think it's important to, to, to note that if you send a, connect, a connection request, be sure that you send a note with it, mm -hmm. right? Because it becomes awkward. For example, if someone sends you a, a connection or you send a connection request, you happen to see this person in real life. Well, your opportunity to actually interact with that person is, has now been passed over because you just kind of sent this connection request without even an introduction, even like, hey, Alex, I love what you're doing over there at Creating Coding Careers. I love to follow your journey. I mean, something as simple as that can never know what kind of Absolutely. conversation can come from that. So in terms of my strategy, it's just like, don't send connection requests, number one. Number two, create content. And for me, it happens yep. to be live streaming, but it could be anything. And LinkedIn has lots of tools for you to explore. And we can get into more of that later if you like. Absolutely. We can get into it now because I was going to say, when you say attract attraction and marketing, I'm thinking like branding, right? You're like, what am I going to bring yeah. to this community? Uh, and at first, I think you started off with, okay, I'm going to show people tips and tricks on how to use this platform. And then obviously you will evolve based on what your audience is asking from you. And then you started bringing in people to kind of uh, give certain, uh, I guess, uh, insight into a specific part of service now. And that kind of just evolved into something even greater where now you're, inv you're inviting all of the skill bridge people to come and say, this is what I'm working yeah. on right now, you know? And so these are all great things. So um, would you encourage people that are just getting into the service now space or just into tech itself uh, to get out there and start making a brand for themselves and maybe either making a LinkedIn live uh, channel like you did, or just uh, something as simple as just, uh, you know, making posts on LinkedIn. Uh, yeah. what, what kind of things would you um, 100%. advise? I advise people to do what's comfortable for them, but to absolutely do something. As long as whatever you're doing is something that's going to bring, <laughs> they said, you know, my milkshake bring all the boys to the yard. You want your milkshake to bring the boys to the yard, right? So it could be LinkedIn Lives. It could be LinkedIn audio events. It could be pre-recorded videos. It could be newsletter. It could be groups. It could be all kinds of things. And I think that LinkedIn is so ripe for this because there's a built-in virality in how LinkedIn has its algorithm set up. There's That's one thing. Number two, with LinkedIn, because of how like your, your connections are all related. So LinkedIn has a, 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 a connections based on degrees, right? So you'll see like maybe someone that you're not connected to, but maybe you have someone in common. So that will be like a second degree relationship or a third degree. Those relationships on LinkedIn, they don't show you anything beyond the third degree. So if you can really utilize like, okay, I know that Alex knows Mike and I'm connected to Alex. Maybe, you know, I can nurture that relationship and maybe get closer proximity to other people. LinkedIn is built for networking. And I think that you could be the brightest 
star in your boot camp, your cohort, your learning training group. But if you're not out there networking, nobody knows. Nobody and knows. if you're nobody knows, and if your end game is to land a job, you need to be out there networking and letting those employers see who you are in some kind of way. And for me, when I was doing my LinkedIn lives, I did that. Be, I did that in terms of like those tips and tricks, because at that time I said, OK, I want a potential employer to see that I can actually use this platform in some type of small way. And then so that way they could not only see me doing it, but also get a sense of my personality, get a sense of my you know, executive presence, if you will and see me in their company. So that's why I did live stream. But you could do LinkedIn newsletters. That Those have worked even, to me, I think even better. And I haven't started launching that yet, but that's going to be my next my, my next avenue to explore. Any other platforms uh, you've been dabbling with? You know, you got YouTube, uh, maybe some of the others, Twitter. Do you use those at all? And do you recommend them? Yeah, I recommend if you're looking, it depends on what you're doing, right? So if you're looking for a job, I say focus on LinkedIn. Absolutely focus on LinkedIn. Now, I can take my content and I have all of the videos, for example, that I've done saved and they will eventually live on, they will eventually be on YouTube, right? But if you expect to get the type of traction you need to land a job by just using YouTube instead of LinkedIn, for example, I doubt that that will happen because YouTube is just so vast, right? And there's not that built-in virality, number one. And number two, there's a, a community because the way that LinkedIn has their relationships, remember I talked about first, second and third degree relationships, those relationships are so blown, blown out of proportion on, on YouTube that you're not going to get the kind of traction I think you would like. And it will take a, like my very first, no, not my first, my second live video, that was my first, first time uh, chatting with Rob for Dork. That one actually went viral, right? And it was viral for me. And I only needed to be viral for me. I don't, I don't need to be in Mr. Beast status. I just need a few thousand people, a few hundred people, or even just the one or two right people to see it. Yep. And it's more likely to happen on LinkedIn than it would be on YouTube. So I focus on LinkedIn, but you know, all these other places could work. It's just LinkedIn to me. It's just to me the smartest and get you directly there. Absolutely. And uh, aside from now being over there, at uh, Glyfast, and I know you got your LinkedIn live channel. I know you're also a, a Snug leader over there in Los Angeles. Um, would you recommend, or I would think you would, uh, for people to go visit their local Snug and start interacting with, I'm not sure if there's, those are meant for more for customers. There's also other types of groups where it's more dedicated to developers. Yeah. I would assume those would be great ways to go out there and start networking as well. What do you yeah, think? I think ServiceNow has such a wonderful community and there's so many things that are built in or baked into the service within the ServiceNow community. You have your ServiceNow user groups, the snugs, you have the developer meetups, and you also have the digital platform, the ServiceNow community. And I think that you could use all three of those. I use Snug just because there was a Snug meeting that was about to happen, I think a couple months after I was introduced to ServiceNow. The meetup was gonna take place like right down the street from me. And I was like, I was just looking for any opportunity to jump in. And so what I would say to folks looking for those opportunities, whether it's Snug or otherwise, I say, look for any opportunity to add value, right? And there's a saying that I have in my household. It's like, give more than you receive, and if you can't do that, aim for reciprocity. If you can't do that, at least add value. And so for me, I went to the snug, I went to the snug meeting. Tracy O'Brien, who was leading leading all of those snugs and overseeing all of them, she was like, look, we're looking for someone here in LA to take over leading the snugs. And I and when I, I walked into that room, Alex, mind you, I was networking the moment I walked into the room. And what networking looks like was like just saying hi to people. Where do you yeah. work? You know, how how long did it take you to get here? Just trying to open those conversations. Now, was everybody receptive? No, but you know, I was just trying to like create conversations. What ended up happening, Tracy said, hey, we need somebody to lead the snug. Well, by that time, I had met so many people in that room. Everybody was like, you should do it. Kelly, you should do it, right? <laughs> right? And so it was an easy transition. Did I know she was going to offer that? No, but the thing is, is that I kept putting myself in the game. I kept putting myself out there. So when I went over to Tracy, I was like, yo, I'm interested. She was like, thank you. Yeah, it's yours. It was that simple, right? And I would say that even and landing your job and landing whatever it is that you're looking for, if you keep putting yourself out there enough times, you're going to start to grease the wheel, so to speak, and you're going to start to make those transitions and those connections easier and easier to get to where you want to get to. I hope that makes sense for y'all. 
Absolutely. And if that makes sense for y'all, you know, drop some uh, some blue hearts or a megaphone. <laughs> there you go. And some great questions. Yeah. So we have some questions coming in, Callie. If it's okay with you, I wanted to start answering some of these. Um, and please, uh, the the top conversation is networking. If you have any questions about networking, please shoot them down into the chat, and we will have the uh, uh, famous Miss Kelly Alexander. Uh, Kali Alexander answered those for you. Uh, my apologies, Kali. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first one is from Miss Anna Davis. So Anna Davis is one of our apprentices. Anna asks, will a branded website with entertaining content besides LinkedIn help to increase your network? I was thinking of building a brand ecosystem, calling it Crash Kitty. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by entertaining content. But what I would, I guess I would need to know, Anna, is what is your end game with the website? I mean, are you looking to uh, build a, are you looking to land a job? Are you looking to showcase, you know, are you a web designer looking to showcase your web designing skills? I would need a little bit more information on that. Uh, so just a little bit of context. So Anna is in the ServiceNow space. She's been studying for ServiceNow. She's actually going to be taking her CSA exam tomorrow. Good luck, Anna. And I know she's trying to uh, expand her network for ServiceNow. So I'm, I'm assuming she is talking about a couple of apps that she's been building that she's been sharing with all of us. Mm. She's building apps on the side. And uh, I think she's talking about maybe uh, kind of showcasing these apps, uh, maybe maybe even built for entertainment, uh, using the ServiceNow platform, maybe on a website. I guess Got that it. would be a better question. I think if you're talking about using a website to like kind of house and host your apps, I think that's great. But how will people know that they're there? The employers that need to see or the potential employers, assuming that that's who you want to see these apps, they're kind of congregate on LinkedIn. Like I follow like all the partners and pay attention to all the CEO, the CEOs, the COOs and the SVPs and the AVPs. They're all on LinkedIn. So create those apps and, and, and house them on CrashKitty.com or wherever it is, but let the people on LinkedIn know. The people, the, the party is taking place on LinkedIn. That's mm -hmm. where the party is. And so yep. you want to make sure that, that you're promoting where the party is. Yep. Make it as, hey, you guys, this is my, my advice. Make it as simple as possible, right? So the people are on LinkedIn, so don't try and change it up. You know, don't try and make things hard for yourself. And especially if you're building apps, girl, let these people on LinkedIn know. <laughs> Very talented uh, apprentice, uh, Anna is for sure. And I want to see him, Anna, and I and I haven't heard of the Crash Kitty until today. Put them up on your uh, on your LinkedIn profile, and I'll be happy to skip over there. There you go, Anna. A little bit of fire into you there. Let's see. We have another question coming from Kibo Weir. I hope I said that right. Um, any tips for your first snug as a next gen candidate, or even someone who may be green behind the ears uh, with networking at snugs? Okay, so this is something I want to point out, and I. You asked this question, Alex, and I forgot to clarify. So you have snugs, and then you have developer meetups. Anybody can go to any either one of these. But to be completely honest with you, snugs are mostly geared toward customers, right? So if you have been to knowledge or you've heard about knowledge, a snug is like a mini knowledge, right? You have people from ServiceNow, you have partners there, and then you also have customers and potential customers there. So in some ways, there's a there's a, an element of selling to customers that take place at Snugs, right? So if you are someone who is like green, as you say, or someone who's looking to get a job, I would say be very conscientious and be aware of how you maneuver in those spaces, keeping in mind that the people who are there are not necessarily looking for people who are green and, and that kind of thing. So it goes back to what I said before. It's like, what value are you offering, right? So if you're going to a snug, think about what value am I, are you going to offer? Because that's kind of the, 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 the environment of a snug is maybe not for that. However, that's where I got put on at, right? Because when I became snug and leader, that gave me a valuable piece of content that I could put on my LinkedIn profile, right? So I would go there and see what value you can offer. Like, and I would say, really pay attention to reading the room, right? That's super important, just read the room. Developer meetups on the other side, on the other end, those are more for developers. Those are for people who are, are you know, learning service now or maybe who are experts in service now. Those are your opportunity to, to kind of network with people who are already in the ecosystem. I hope that distinction makes sense. 
I think it does. What do you what do you say about finding mentors in the ecosystem? How would you go about doing something like that? Say if there's no mentor network quite set up, uh, would you advise just kind of reaching out to people who are in the industry who have a little bit of experience and just saying, hey, you know what? I'm kind of new to the industry. I'm looking for someone to kind of mentor me a little bit. I just want to know if I could borrow maybe an hour out of your month just to kind of just uh, so I can present to you what I'm working on, maybe get some feedback. Um, what's your what's your take on that? Yeah, that's a really good question. <clears throat> I would say to not ask for someone to mentor you. I could be unconventional in saying this. I think that there's so much information out there right now that people are not taking advantage of. And let me tell you what I mean. CJ and the Duke podcast. Mm -hmm. Y'all know I love CJ and the Duke. Corey, Absolutely. CJ, Wesley, and Rob, the Duke for Dork. I love what they're doing. Breakpoint. Uh, Chuck Tomasi and Chuck now Tomasi. Lauren McManaman is now also becoming more involved. There's all these great Chuck's uh, Chuck's JavaScript program for the Now platform. There's a lot of content out there right now, and when you ask for a, when you ask someone to be your mentor and you haven't taken advantage of the stuff that's already out there in the atmosphere in the ecosystem. It kind of sounds like you want somebody to do something for you when you haven't done the minimum. You want the maximum when you haven't done the minimum. Mm -hmm. And sense. these are just some harsh truths. And, that, and keep in mind, y'all, I'm a mom of three, of three children, and I'm going to give y'all that mom tough love. Like my mother always said, don't ask for help until you read the room. Right. <laughs> she, she always would say that, like, don't start asking for instructions. Don't start asking for help until you read the instructions yourself, until you read the room. And so that's what I'm encouraging you all to do. Don't go asking someone to mentor you when you haven't done the minimum of doing the stuff that they tell you to do in CJ and the Duke. So for me, for example, I would look I would feel like I was a, I would be a complete clown if I asked Rob or CJ to mentor me when they tell you all the time what to do in their podcast. Interestingly enough. Rob is like one of my mentors now mm -hmm. because I've done those things. So like, for example, one of the, the videos that I did was about creating a UI policy. Let me tell you how that came about. I was listening to one of their podcasts and they were like, I think the name of the podcast, you guys, is What to Build. It's on Spotify, Apple, wherever you listen to podcasts. The episode is called What to Build. And what he what they were talking about is like Rob was going on his thing about don't start posting that you just got your certification as a C CSA. Nobody cares about that. I was yeah. like, man, that's a little tough. <laughs> <laughs> that was hard, right? All y'all out there, you know, studying. I think Anna, I think you're studying for your CS doing the CSA. That's that's a hard thing. And it and you know, and you're proud of it that you that you finally got this thing that you've been working for, right? But he was like, nobody cares about that that certificate. And so, but, but then he goes, but if you're talking about how to do a UI policy, and then Corey goes, that means that post goes from vanilla to Rocky Road. And I was like, <laughs> shoot, let me go home and record myself building a UI policy, right? Because that's a lot more interesting. And when I built that UI policy, man, those connection requests started coming in. And it's not just the connection request, because once you get those connection requests, now you can have a conversation. Yep. Now I can say hey to, to Rob because he's connected with me. The only person I think I ever sent a connection re request to when I was looking for a job was CJ Wesley. I sent a connection request to him. But everybody else, when they would send something to me, now I can start those conversations, right? So I don't I forgot your question, Alex. I'm sorry. I'll just be going off. I have so much to say, and I'm trying to get it all out at once. No, that's okay. But it sounds like that was kind of like the foundation for 100 Days of Service now, right? It's kind of like, all right, well, I'm going to show people that I just learned this new yeah. tool or this new trick, and I'm going to make a video out of it. And I think you were the only one at the time doing something like that for all of us newbies out there. So it was like, I was just drawn to you automatically. Like, wow, there's somebody out, out there kind of just going through the same thing I was going through, and now yeah. you're going to show me what you learned, and I might little or, uh, learn a little bit better off of you. And so so um, is that kind of how that grew or that started? Yeah, actually, it did start very similar to that. There is a on, on Saturdays, there is a, a hashtag called Social Saturdays on LinkedIn. And it's an opportunity for people to like kind of build their following, build their connections. And within the SecOps space, they are super active in, in on their on the link on LinkedIn. And Dave Michi, 
he was do he he does this thing called called a hundred days of SecOps or something like that, hundred days mm. of security, okay. something like that. He does, and I would always like really be jamming with them during the week. But then when they would come to the Saturdays, it would be it would just be more focused on SecOps, right? Yeah. And then I was like, man, I wish they had something like this in service now. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yep. I can make it. I can make that that a hundred days of service now. And so it happened from there. And once I said, okay, I'm going to do 100 days of service now, you know, I grabbed all the URLs, you grabbed all the things. And then I was like, okay, well, day one. And, and initially, I was going to, in my, my, in my head, I said, I'm going to go on YouTube, ra rather, go on LinkedIn every day, every day for 100 days. And I bet you by after 100 episodes, I'll be able to land a job. I got a job offer, I think, after episode four. Wow. After episode, it was, it was episode four and I think episode seven, I accepted the offer, right? And so you'd mentioned earlier in the stream that, you know, your content started to change. Well, the reason why my content changed was because my intention was to get a job within 100 days. Well, by day seven, that was already unlocked. So I was yeah. like, well, what, what do, do I do now? <laughs> 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 what do I do with the rest of these days, right? The rest of these 93 days. And so that's when I started to do lives live stream service now coaching because i mind you i was getting all these connection requests yep. and these are for like from the titans man i was getting connection requests from like mike lombardo mark scott jace benson all these people and so i was like well wait a minute these people are like some geniuses in our space oh yeah only need I only need one job. Only need one great job. I got that one great job. So then maybe I can use these connection requests that I've got and maybe set them up with some of the newer folks. And maybe we can do this thing live, create some synergy, and maybe they could show showcase themselves and maybe a potential employer would pick them up similar to how an employer picked me up. And so that's how that 100 days of service now started to shift and morph and do the things that it's doing. And now in my new role at GlideFast, I'm more on the sales side of things. So you're seeing my content kind of shift even more, right? So I'm making it work for me. It, it, is, it is my brand. It is, it is my baby. I'm going to make this thing be my, 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 my Trojan horse, so to speak. Nice. Speaking of some of the service now stars, I see some women here. I see Philip Swan uh, dropping comments in there. What's up, Philip? How's it going? Uh, I see Chan's in the house. What's going on, Chan? I see Terrence. A lot of people that you and I both uh, know. And I just want to say hello. I know there's a lot of you out there, and I can't say hi, hi to everybody, but thank you all for joining us today. I do have another question coming in, Kali. Let's see. Where did we go? This is from one of our own team members. This is from William Broxton. So Will asks Kali. What's been the hardest, most valuable lesson you've learned this past year and on your ServiceNow networking journey? The hardest? What has been the hardest and most valuable lesson? Um, the most valuable lesson, I would say, is keep your foot on the pedal. <laughs> keep your foot on the pedal. Like, don't stop. Don't let nobody get in your way. Make a way out of no way, like really be about getting it done. Don't let nobody stop you. And, and here's something else. And it's interesting because my, my sister just says that I can do this well. If you have like your eye on a particular goal, like don't be afraid of cutting people off who tell you that you can't, that you won't, they get in the way, they try to hold you back, like cut people off so that you can get to where you got to be. And, and that became really clear to me earlier in my life, but it also became something that I needed to do in, in this season of my life as well. So I would say that's the most valuable lesson. Keep your foot in the pedal and, you know, cut off anything that's going to try and hold you back. Great piece of advice. I do want to post to this here. So Philip Swan, I didn't know this is mentioning that service now actually does have a mentorship program. So uh, for those of you who are interested in getting a mentor, I guess you can ch check that up or look that up there. I'll find it later and I'll post it as well. Uh, thanks, Philip. I appreciate that. Let's see. Hey, Philip Swan. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, another piece of advice coming from Stefan Tatiano. Uh, Stefan says, I would highly recommend Twitter. I met a service now developer on Twitter that introduced me to Ebony. Now we chat weekly. I'm not sure. Have you used Twitter as a um, networking type platform? I don't use Twitter as a networking platform, but I say, like, if it works for you, do it. Whatever works for you, do it. I, I, I need it. I want it LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn needed more voices in 
service now. They need it more. They need it newer voices. Like when I stepped back and looked at the platforms, and now I looked at Twitter, I looked at YouTube, I looked at Facebook, I looked at Reddit, I looked at all of them. And when I, from my view, from my angle, I said, okay, where is it that I can fit in and get and accomplish my goals the quickest? And for me, it was it was LinkedIn. Now, have I been on Twitter? Have I been on on, on um, all these other platforms? Reddit? Yeah, I've been on all those. And yeah, that. But in terms of like getting the most mileage, LinkedIn is the place. Absolutely. So we all know that you're over there at Glidefast with the mayor of service now, Michael Lombardo, and is asking, is Glidefast one of the origins where some of the service now OGs come from? So aside from Michael Lombardo, uh, I'm not really familiar with many of the people oh, over there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know that we had Ed Wilson over there for some time, and she's one of the uh, Titans over there. Anybody else? Uh, that we should be uh, looking out for maybe possible future guest speakers, Kelly? Let me tell yeah. Let me tell you, Glidefast has some of the most talented and dynamic people I've ever met. And it's it's a uh, look like like what what equal in what lane do you want? We got people on the process side, we got people on the marketing side, we got people that's working in the in the developer side. I mean, some of the people that come to mind who who I just <laughs> Mo Unwala is someone who I absolutely love. He's an architect. There is uh, Jacob Binker. There is, I mean, there, there's so many. I, I shouldn't even start naming people because there are so many people. But yeah. Alex, if you want me to run down a list yeah. for you, no, I no. can. Yeah, uh, and you know, if, if you want to start <laughs> do some of that, we can. <laughs> but yeah. but in terms of what her question is, is Glyphas one of the origins where some of the service now OGs come from? I mean. There's certainly some OGs at service now, but they're all over the place. But in terms of the people who I know who are like really great and, you know, I work with these people and, you know, I can say like, yeah, they, they, they some OGs, they, they some real ones. <laughs> oh, here we go. So this is a good one. Um, I have one. What are some mistakes, common mistakes that people do when networking in the tech industry and how can they be avoided? Mm hmm. They ask for something. <laughs> they just ask. They just ask yeah. for something. I mean, like you they send you a connection request and they say, can you do da 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 for me? And they give you a, an enumerated list of what what they wow. want from you. And I'm like, wow, really? <laughs> <laughs> um, but at the same time, I get it because a lot of this is why I get it. But then I also want to give you the other side of it and how it comes across. In terms of, of the being a fallacy, it's because you're asking something of someone that you don't even know. You're asking them for their connections. You're asking them for a reference. You're asking for a this, a that. And a lot of times, people are busy. The things that you're asking for are easily Googleable, Googleable. True. And it's just not the way you want to begin a, a relationship. So I would say, like, avoid doing that. Uh, you know, I'll go back to CG and the Duke podcast. There's a podcast they have on called How to Ask for Help. You should, I would recommend people listen to that episode, How to Ask for Help. And the thing is, is that I don't mind helping anybody, but keep in mind, like, I just been in the, I've, I've learned about service now. This is probably like my one year anniversary of actually mm -hmm. learning about service now in July of 2022. When people ask me for help, nonetheless, I try to help them as much as I can, right? Sure. But in terms of like where those relationships go, they don't really go anywhere. Like you say, oh, well, where can I get blah, blah, blah. And I'll say, here it is. But those relationships don't go anywhere. Think about how you can add value. Here's an example. Jace Benson, he was on a live stream or on a video I, I saw of his. And he says, hey, I'm looking for someone who can help me do something. He was talking, maybe it was aggregate some information. And I was like, man, if I was just jumping into service now, I would say, yo, I would love to help you, Jace. Like, think about ways that you can add value. I think that that's the best way to, to kind of, get in there with someone and not just get in there, get in there with someone, but to, to actually develop relationships. And that's what you want. You want to be able to develop relationships, whether it's with networking, whether you're new in service. Now you want to figure out how it is that you can add value. On the other hand, Alex, and I'm going to just kind of wrap this up and land this plane again. But on the other hand, I do understand why there's that urgency to ask for help without the, the kind of 
the courtesy because a lot of times people are in, not everybody is in creating coding careers, which they should be because, you know, it's that front door into tech, paid Absolutely. apprenticeships and all about that life. That's right. But in these co, a lot of the times in the cohort, the next gen cohorts, those people are taking 12 weeks of their lives and not getting paid. I don't know any adult who can really do that. So I understand there's a level of desperation there and what an urgency there. So I understand it, but at the same time, figure out how you're going to be able to add value. Great tip. And I think Phil um, Swan is going to follow up with some great advice as well. If it's okay, I want to read this out. Please. Any, anytime you ask something, even internally to a colleague, Treat it like a support ticket. You tell them, here's what I've done so far, and this is what I've tried and where I'm stuck. Here's what I think. Please help me validate with some ideas. I think that's yes. a great piece of advice. I love that. And that's what and that's what CJ and the dude talk about in that podcast too. They like show show what you have done. You know, I this mm -hmm. is where I'm at. This is yeah, totally. Yes. So this might not be hard for you, but maybe it's hard for some others. When you're talking to somebody who's a lot more experienced, let's say, maybe you're a little bit intimidated. How would you approach networking with someone like that? Like you said, you're rubbing elbows with CJ Wesley and then uh, the Duke over there. And they've been in the industry for, I think, 10 plus years. I don't quite know how many, but they're quite the gurus themselves. So how do you get over that? Wow, these are the big guys right here. How do I talk to someone like that? What kind of advice would you give for someone? Man, I take advantage of every single moment that I'm with them. <laughs> mm -hmm. you, ha you really have to get over your fear, you guys. Um, Again, I go back to keeping your eye on your mission. Like, I'm doing this because I want to model this for my children. I'm doing this because I knew that my ancestors did not have this opportunity to do so. So when I keep those two things in mind, like, I don't have any fear at all. Like, I'd be like, Mike Lombardo, I got to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> Corey, I need to talk to you. Rob, what are you doing? Can I call you? Like, like really keep in mind like your objectives and, and the why behind it. Like I really, I have a, a, I have two sons and a daughter. My daughter is the youngest. And I really want to model for my children like, dang, mommy, turn this whole thing around for us. I want to model for my mother Lear who, who, who lived all of her life in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. First woman in, first person in her community to have, indoor plumbing, <laughs> right? Never touched a computer, never knew what a computer was. She was even spooked by the television. She, I want to be able to be like, yo, this is what I'm doing for my legacy, right? And when I keep my legacy in mind, like y'all remember, you only got one life. You, what did Eminem say? You only got one shot. This is your chance. Like you got this, your opportunity. You got to make it pop. So this is how I, I see it. Like I need to, I, I don't have fear because I just know like, I'm, this is my purpose. This is what I got to do for my family. So that that fear stuff doesn't play with me anymore. Absolutely. Yeah, That's I was, me. I was intimidated. I think it was Jay Spencer, right? So I'm like, wow, this is Jay. Somebody asked me to come on the show. And I didn't expect, as soon as I asked, he was like, yeah, sure. What do you want to do? It was just as simple as that, you know? And uh, He's the, a the, teddy the bear. He's so, he is so giving and so warm, right? He is. And um, I guess the rest of the service now community is just like that. So no, uh, they're not. Then, no, they're not. Oh, well, maybe <laughs> <laughs> the majority of the, the majority <laughs> that I've come across have been pretty nice. So, uh, yeah, I, but you maybe you have some different experiences. Well, here, this is what I'm saying. It's not necessarily that I have different experiences. What I'm saying, what I'm trying to reiterate here is that whether they're nice or not, it really doesn't matter because I want I want everyone to keep their objective front of mind, top of mind. Like this is where we're going. So it doesn't matter if they're nice or not. Like if you're add, adding value to each other, mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter. That's all I'm saying. Absolutely. And then Phil just echoes. Just remember, they're people too. They people too. Yeah. And Terrence says, "Walk in every room as yourself. I'm not cowering. My voice doesn't change. I'm confident and proud." Hey, what up, Jay-Z? <laughs> uh, so we talked about, let's see, I know there's a lot of uh, networking events uh, in organizations. We talked about the Snug events, uh, outside of the Snug yeah. events, outside of the LinkedIn Live platform. Uh, what other networking events would you recommend to anybody in tech and maybe more specifically uh, people in service now? I recommend doubling down on LinkedIn. That's what I recommend. Okay. Um, 
I think that the snug groups are great. If you have, if you have a developer meetup in your area, like I'm in LA and there is no developer meetup. Um, if there, if I were in LA and I was looking to start creating some type of community, creating some type of buzz around me, I would look in my community and I'd be like, oh, I'm in LA. There's no developer meetup. Let me talk to Chuck Tomasi. Let me talk to whoever it is so I can create a developer meetup. That's what I would be doing. I think that sometimes, like, this is what I'm saying to you all. And keep in mind that this the, the mama, maybe it's a little bit of tough love. I'm saying to you that LinkedIn is right with opportunity. And so when people say, well, what about this? And what about over here? And I did this and I was able to find, you know, a, 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 a this over there. But, I, but I'm saying to you, but like LinkedIn is where it's at, y'all. So like do LinkedIn, take advantage of all the opportunities and all of the functionality within LinkedIn. You have LinkedIn audio events, LinkedIn live, LinkedIn pre-recorded videos. You have newsletters. You have all of these things on LinkedIn that is just built in waiting for you. LinkedIn wants to promote your content. So if I'm saying to you, do you use LinkedIn? I, I'm not, I don't understand. Like, well, well what about Twitter? <laughs> I just don't understand that. Keep in mind, this is out of love though. I'm going to be sharing your LinkedIn URL, if it's okay with you. Um, I just want them to see all the great content you've been putting out there. I know you've been being interviewed all of the Titans um, in the ServiceNow industry. And next Friday, you are going to be interviewing none other than CEO of Creating Coding Careers, Mike Roberts. That's and you guys right. are going to be talking about how Mike is really um, – creating this whole new pathway of how to get to tech, getting paid to code. So I hope you guys can all make it. That's going to be next Friday on Callie's channel. So you can, you can check that out on her um, LinkedIn URL. Uh, what time is that one at Callie? I think you're going to be in the after, yes. you know, maybe at 530. Yeah, that's going to be going live at 530 PM Pacific Friday, the 21st, I believe of July. Please come, Mike. I know he's, you know, he's going to be dropping some some truth bombs as well. And I can't wait to have that conversation. I love what Creating Coding Careers is building, that front door into tech, paid apprenticeships. What? Yeah, we're going to get into some things, right? Absolutely. Uh, a couple more questions just came in. I hope we could just get one yes, more. Yes, yes, yes. I, I love just, questions. Just <laughs> one more. This is Manly Smith. I think you know Manly. Manly's one of our alumni. He graduated last year and he's currently working over there at proficio as a service now developer congratulations manly exactly congrats manly manly's asking does linkedin premium play a role in networking ability on the Ooh, platform yes. Good yes that's a great question that is a great question i absolutely highly recommend linkedin premium i heard about you know because you have the free linkedin and then you pay i think it's like 30 dollars something mm -hmm. like that for linkedin premium that unlocks an addition additional functionality i've had it for so long that i cannot remember what are the free features and what are the premium features but what i do know is that i'm able to get analytics on how my content performs and i believe that's because of the premium features that i have i do highly recommend that people get linkedin premium when you get LinkedIn premium, not only do you get that greater functionality on LinkedIn, but you also get full access to the LinkedIn learning library where you can take all kinds of courses on all kinds of things professional related. So I recommend LinkedIn. That was a great question, Manly. Thank you, Manly. So I've taken up about almost an hour of your time, Kali. I really appreciate you joining us today. Mm -hmm. Any last words of wisdom you would like to give anybody looking to start networking in tech or specifically in ServiceNow? Yes. Don't be afraid, y'all. Keep in mind your why. Learn to add value wherever you can. When someone does do something for you, stay gracious and stay humble. A thank you goes a long way. Absolutely. That's Thank it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kali. Remember, everybody, next Friday, Kali and Mike Roberts talking about apprenticeships, how to get people into tech and get paid to do it. Looking That's forward right. to that one. Everybody have a great weekend. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, next week, we also have a, um, a LinkedIn live uh, session going on at 3 o'clock. After that, be sure to drop into uh, Kali's session right afterwards. Everybody have a great weekend, Kali. Thanks, thank you so Alex. Much again. Everybody have a good weekend. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Creating Coding Careers.